In this video, you're going to learn what Helm is and how we can use Helm charts to manage and deploy Kubernetes applications. If you're working with Kubernetes, then Helm is one of the most important tools you can learn. In this video, we will cover what Helm is and why it's so important for Kubernetes, the components of Helm, such as charts, configurations, and releases, the Helm chart file and folder structure, as well as how to apply Helm templating to Kubernetes manifests. And finally, we will go over the most important CLI commands for managing Helm chart releases. So what is Helm? Well, you can think of Helm as the package manager for Kubernetes. Just like you would use Yum, Apt, or Homebrew to install applications on a server or PC, you can use Helm to install, update, or rollback Kubernetes applications. This can simplify complicated application deployments into a single command. Let's say you want to install Prometheus into your Kubernetes cluster for monitoring. Now Prometheus is made up of many different components such as push gateways, the alert manager, and the Prometheus server itself. So you could write your own manifest files to define all the different components to host Prometheus in Kubernetes, but this would include writing and managing many different manifests for the different components such as the pod deployments, config maps, secrets, and services. If you were to start from scratch, this would be an incredible amount of work, and that's why Helm was developed. Helm makes it so instead of having to reinvent the wheel and come up with these configurations yourself, you can just use a Helm chart that someone else has written. Helm charts are simply a collection of YAML files that have been bundled together. Helm charts for popular software are available in public repositories for you to use. You can search for Helm charts and install the application in a single Helm install command. If it's for a popular application or service, it will be easy to find a Helm chart for it. Helm charts also make use of templating, allowing you to customize the application to your needs by providing your own values to override any defaults. Let's now get into the components of Helm, of which there are three primary concepts that you need to understand. First we have the Helm chart, which is a bundle of YAML files necessary to create a Kubernetes application. The YAML files within a Helm chart look just like those that you would deploy to a Kubernetes cluster using Kube Control, but they also include Helm templating to make their configurations more dynamic. The second concept is the config values. This is the dynamic configuration you can provide that will customize the deployment of the Helm chart. Config values can be provided when deploying the Helm application through arguments or by providing a values.yaml file. The third component is what's known as the release. This is the running instance of a chart combined with a specific configuration. Releases are how Helm manages deployed applications and is what allows you to install, upgrade, or roll back any deployments. Managing releases is a key skill you will need to have and one I get into in my Practical Helm tutorial, which I'll share the link to when it's available. So we touched earlier on Helm charts and Helm repositories. With Helm you can have both public and private repositories. The most popular one is Artifact Hub, and this is the recommended location I suggest to find open source Helm charts. You can find Helm charts there by browsing the website, and it's also built right into Helm CLI by running the Helm search hub command. You can also add additional private or public repositories using the Helm repo add command. Let's now talk about one of the most important features of Helm, which is its templating engine. The Helm templating engine is what allows you to customize your Helm releases. Let's imagine a Kubernetes application. In most scenarios, you're going to run multiple instances of this application. For example, you will probably run an instance in your development environment, test environment, and production environment. The requirements and configuration for these environments are going to be different. Things like namespaces, labels, container images are likely things that need custom values in each environment. This is the power of Helm templating. Instead of having to manage individual YAML files for each environment, you would define a common blueprint through your Helm chart, and any dynamic values can be overridden. Your manifest files will look just the same as regular Kubernetes manifests, but dynamic values are switched out with Helm templating. Default values are provided in the values.yaml file, and you can have additional values files for other environments. Let's take a look at this simple example. Here we have a Helm template for a Kubernetes deployment. You can see it's exactly the same as a regular Kubernetes deployment, but some of the values have Helm templating applied, making them dynamic and taking in the values of whatever you need to feed them. 
It's common to have individual value YAML files for each of your different environments. Here you can see we have one for development, QA, and production, and they are populated with different values for namespace, replica count, and image tag. When you run your helm install command, you can specify to use one of these environment-specific value files, and that's how your helm chart will be deployed. Let's now look at the folder structure for a helm chart. Here we can see the basic structure of a helm chart. The top level directory is the name of the helm chart, and the chart.yaml file below contains metadata about the chart such as the name, description, and version. We then have the templates folder, which contains your helm templated Kubernetes manifest files, as well as a notes.txt file. The YAML files are a one-for-one -one copy of regular Kubernetes manifests that have Helm templating applied to make specific values dynamic. The notes.txt file contains notes about the deployment. This information is printed out to the console whenever someone runs a Helm install or Helm status command, so it's a good way of relaying installation notes to the users. Finally, we have the value YAML files which contain the configuration for the chart. Values.yaml is the default configuration values for the chart. You can also specify environment-specific value files to override any defaults. In my practical Helm tutorials, I get into the exact specifics of developing Helm charts, so if you're looking for more details, make sure to check those videos out. Another important concept that you need to understand is the differences between Helm version 2 and Helm version 3. Everything we have gone over in this video so far has been in reference to Helm version 3, but you may work for an organization that's still utilizing Helm v2, so it's important to know that there are some very key differences. And the biggest change that you need to know about in Helm v2 versus Helm v3 was the removal of the service Tiller. You see, in Helm v2, Helm followed a client-server model. In version 2, you would use the Helm client just the same, but it would use an additional server known as Tiller to manage the changes to Kubernetes. In Helm version 3, Tiller was removed. The Helm CLI now manages all releases directly using the Kubernetes API, and this has many key benefits, such as less complexity and greater granularity with permissions. At a fundamental level, this is all you need to understand about the differences between Helm version 2 and Helm version 3. What's more important is to get practical experience deploying applications using Helm, which I'll get into in my next video, but before you jump into that, here's a quick overview of all the CLI commands you should know to get started with Helm. The four most common ones are the repo command for managing repositories, the install and uninstall command for deploying your Helm charts, the Helm list command for listing out all your releases, and finally the Helm status command for getting the status of a release. Let's look into these commands a bit deeper. You can see with the Helm repo command you have the option to add, remove, or update repositories as well as list out all the packages of a repository. Up next is the helm install command, which is how you actually install a helm chart into your environment. You need to provide it with a unique name for your release, and also provide it with the location of your helm chart, which can either be the local path on the file system or a repo and chart name. You can also specify inline parameters for customizing the installation or provide additional value YAML files. The helm list command will list all your helm releases, which are helm charts that have been deployed into your environment. You can see here, it gives you the name of the release, the namespace it's deployed to, and the current revision. It also provides you with the time the release was last updated, as well as its current status. If you want to get further information on a specific release, you can use the helm status command, which will bring up additional information about a specific release. The helm uninstall command will uninstall any releases that you have deployed. It's good to also add the keep history flag so the release isn't removed from helm's release history. This allows you to view the history of the release as well as roll back the uninstall if required. So those are the most important commands you should know when getting started with helm. I will be releasing a practical video next week on how to deploy applications using Helm in which we will be deploying multiple releases of Prometheus in different environments like dev and production. If you have any questions about Helm, please leave them below, and make sure to check the description below for additional videos on learning Helm. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.